smoking may be harmful to your health, but the genome isn't listening. There was a genetic component to having a pleasurable reaction. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. The warnings are everywhere in newspaper and magazine articles and televised public service announcements, even on cigarette packages. Tobacco is harmful to your health. In fact, it can be and often is quite deadly. Nevertheless, about 3,000 Americans under 18 take up smoking every day, and many of us are unable to stop. So, once we take that first or second puff, why do we become addicted? A couple of generations ago, smoking was advertised as not only hip and cool, but even downright healthy. We've learned a lot since then, but still, hundreds of thousands of Americans have adopted this potentially fatal habit. Tobacco is king, a somewhat dubious honor in this case. Tobacco is the leading cause of preventable death in the United States. Smoking-related ailments like lung cancer and coronary heart disease claim more lives than a variety of other killers combined. Tobacco's death toll 430,000 Americans each year. What's fascinating to me about it is why some people choose to smoke and others do not. Um, smoking, initially at least, is not a pleasurable event for most people. Um, they cough, they might get sick, they might get dizzy. 70% of people smoke some cigarettes as a kid. Try it. But only about 25 or 30% go on to become regular smokers. Why? What are the factors that determine whether you become a smoker or not? It looks pretty solid for heart rate. Researchers at the University of California, San Francisco and SRI International are looking for answers. They're focusing, in large part, on twins, both identical twins who share the same DNA sequence and fraternal twins who have different DNA but grow up in the same environment. How relaxed are you right now? The twin studies are very helpful in separating out genetic factors and influences outside the body, the so-called nature-nurture effects. If you are an identical twin, it's more likely that your twin will be a smoker if you're a smoker, compared to if you are a fraternal twin. So it's not just being raised together. There's some factor that, that looks like it's genetic. And there's a term called heritability, and it seems like about 50% of tobacco use and tobacco addiction is heritable. It means it's got some genetic factor. But how much of nicotine addiction is in the genes and how much is due to the environment? To find out, SRI's Gary Swan analyzes data from an 18-year study of World War II era twins. These participants grew up in a time when smoking was more accepted, even promoted. Twins Seymour and Martin Asarno were part of the original study. They, like many others, were smokers during the war, but have since quit. The reason I'm a non-smoker is because I never learned the technique how to get the smoke out of your lungs. So if I took an inhale puff, I would feel like somebody compressed my chest with a hammer. It was very, very uncomfortable and uh, one would sneeze and cough and it soon broke me out of the habit of wanting to smoke. When we got older and I went to a dance, I just felt more comfortable holding a cigarette in my hand and uh, I never really inhaled. It was just a question of taking a puff and then blowing it out my mouth again and making believe that you know we're smoking. In the World War II twins, we took a look at subjective reactions in one of our analyses, and we did find some suggestion that um, there, were a, there was a genetic component to having a pleasurable reaction. Ah, but what is pleasure? At the risk of complicating this to death, we will consult once again with our all-knowing, extremely self-confident electric encyclopedia. 
about pleasure. In the brain, neurons are cells that transfer and integrate information. Each neuron receives thousands of signals from other neurons, and all those incoming signals determine how a signal is passed on. Neurons communicate with each other through chemical messengers. One of the key neurotransmitters involved in feelings of pleasure is dopamine. Nicotine promotes the release of dopamine, stimulating reward pathways and causing people to light up again and again, even if they can't explain why. That's addiction. The genes that control the amount of dopamine in the brain or alter the dopamine receptors should have an effect on smoking and quitting. There are some research showing that if you have a deficient receptor for dopamine, uh, which means you don't have an adequate dopamine effect, then people tend to smoke more. The idea being that if you smoke more, you, you try to release more dopamine to compensate for less effect on the receptor. Researchers are certain that environment is a big factor in the addiction formula, but genes are the key to discovering the reasons behind the need for a nicotine fix. To see how nicotine hooks smokers, a recent study is looking at nicotine metabolism, how quickly nicotine is processed and removed from the body. Shirley and Jennifer are among nearly 200 sets of twins who have agreed to have their nicotine metabolism tested. Some of the twins are smokers, some, like these two, are not. They undergo extensive interviews. Are you lightheaded right now? One. They are injected with a solution of nicotine and codeine, a chemical that is made by the body from nicotine. How about you, Jen? I, I, I felt it for a little while, but it went away. It'll come back. <laughs> Although Shirley and Jennifer have identical DNA, their physical reactions to nicotine are different. Well, at first I didn't feel anything, and then uh, my arm got real tingly. And then I started to feel like this wave, like a rush, um, almost like if you had been drinking had, and getting a buzz, you know, from drinking alcohol, something like that. That kind of buzzy feeling, went, and a little dizzy. I felt my heart kind of speed up just a little bit, and a little bit of lightheadedness towards the end. Uh, besides that, I really didn't feel too much of a change. The thinking is that the faster it is converted, that the uh, more likely that you will become a smoker. The slower uh, the metabolism, the less likely you will become a heavy regular smoker. So our hope is that by studying the genetic component of, of how the body breaks down nicotine, we'll have a better insight into nicotine dependence. The researchers have identified several gene mutations for the major enzymes that metabolize nicotine. They're trying to figure out how each one affects metabolism and perhaps addiction. The best we do in current trials is uh, getting maybe 30 or 35 percent of smokers to quit. The reason is probably that we're not using the best drug for everybody. And so we're hoping that in time we can use genetic information to select what's the best drug for which smoker. And, and then the success rates might be 60 or 70 or 80 percent, which would be wonderful. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.